So I don't know if you have a credo, uh, but mine goes like this. It says, life is worth living, so I refuse to merely exist. I will pursue a life of meaning and purpose, joy and fulfillment. It says that the world is not yet as it ought to be. Neither is my city, and neither am I. But it says I reject apathy and despair, believing that I can make an impact for good. And it says that I am not alone And so I press in through self-sufficiency and narcissism, and and I strive to live in authentic community. As I sat with that credo and thought about the best place to start it, I remembered um, this very kind of poignant memory I had from almost a year ago. I was on the side of a mountain in a remote area in Guatemala, We had flown down there because of a friend of a friend was growing coffee on a small plot of land that he had inherited from his dad. And we were walking through the coffee plants, and the thing about this friend of a friend, Samuel is his name, the thing about Samuel is that Samuel lives very modestly with his three kids and his wife. He he doesn't have a lot of money, and he doesn't have a lot of land, and so he doesn't prune his coffee plants that much because he doesn't want to lose that season of productivity. And so as we're kind of walking through his plants, we're noticing that the coffee plants are real tall, taller than you'd expect if you know anything about coffee plants, and they start kind of leaning on each other. And if you wanted to pick them, you'd have to pull them all the way down and to pull the cherries off of the top. And the memory that came to my mind as I thought about my credo was one moment As Samuel is in front of me and a few friends are behind me and he's leading us through these plants and we're kind of hunched down over and the coffee plants are kind of converging over top of us. And the memory is right in that moment because I was so content. And the moment stuck with me because I didn't know why I would be content. It had been raining for days before, and so the mountainside was super muddy. We had, like, galoshes on, and it was kind of slippery. And I'm at least two plane rides removed, two languages away and cultures away from what I've known. I have no desire to be a farmer or to live in remote villages. I have no reason to be content in that moment. And so as I came back to the States and that moment wouldn't leave me, I tried to figure out... What is it that makes me content there, hunched under the coffee plants, following Samuel? And I realized because in that moment, I liked who I was becoming. See, I liked that I was somebody who went out of his way to embrace the fact that the small choices I make here have ramifications around the world, and in me is the potential to make an impact for good on issues that span down into South America and Central America. I liked the fact that I went out of the way to buy coffee from somebody that I know and pay him a living wage. I liked that it said I was becoming a more generous person. And as I sat kind of in the comfortability of my home and thought about that, I realized a truth. It kind of settled down in me that if you like who you're becoming, you can be content in any situation. Even on the side of a mountain, hunched over and muddy in Guatemala. So I kind of thought about that and tried to decide, what do I do with this kind of realization? The realization that my quality of life is more tied to who I am than what I have or what I'm accomplishing. I started to put together, if, if I want to have a life that I'm going to like, and I start to realize that it's more tied to who I am, then who do I want to be? And so I put together this credo about meaning, impact, and community. I'm going to be a person of meaning, impact, and community. And I kind of went out into my little section of the world and started talking. Hey, did you realize that your quality of life is more tied to who you are than what you have? And we can become people of meaning, impact, and community. I thought it was like this really kind of creative idea. 
That's not a creative idea. Right? I didn't get, like, when I told people that, like, hey, you know that your quality of life is more tied to who you are than what you have? They're like, oh, yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? That's not a new idea. I didn't get, like, moments of enlightenment happening on people's faces in front of me. Everybody knows that. You knew that. So then I started to wrestle with it. We, if we know that, then why in the big and small decisions of our life do they tend to be more about what we have or what we're getting than who we're becoming? I wrestled with that because I wanted to walk slowly because um, friends of mine gave me the knowing nods and not the moments of enlightenment. And yet they weren't content with who they were becoming. I didn't want to offend them. And so I started to think about what is it um, that keeps us from building a life around who we're becoming instead of building lives around what we have. And my first tendency was want to blame advertising, right? Of course. Uh, The average American sees, I'm not even going to quote, a ridiculous number of ads every day, right? Right? And it's probably their fault. They entice us to buy more things and confuse our priorities. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized, you know what, we don't even have to work that hard. See, if I'm honest, the momentum of my life carries me away from meaning, impact, and community. It carries me into things like entertainment and, and comfort and isolation If I do nothing, I will slowly float away from a life of meaning, impact, and community, one I can be proud of, and into entertainment and comfort and isolation. And it's simple, the reason that that happens, because it's just easier. When discontentment, like, bubbles up in my life, it's easier to watch more TV than it is to ask myself the hard questions about the meaning and purpose of my life. It's just easier. It just is. And when I'm faced with the hard questions of the world and the the large problems, it's easier to build my home bigger and buy a more comfortable couch and isolate myself and pretend that the problems aren't there. It's just easier. It's nobody's fault. It's just easier. And if I'm honest, it's easier to dwindle into closing the garage door and being alone than it is to enter into the hard work of building real relationships. Do you see that the momentum of our lives carries us away from meaning, impact, and community and towards comfort and entertainment and isolation? It just happens. So I started to think about what could we do, and do you realize that if we're going to like who we are becoming, it's got to be intentional. And the credo became so important. But then I realized one very key point was that if I was going to find kind of the force to overcome the natural kind of flow of my life, here it is, I was never going to do it alone. You just can't. If you're going to like who you're becoming, you'll never get there by yourself. You just won't. You don't have in you the strength to overcome the waves of your life that moves you away from meaning, impact, and community and towards entertainment, comfort, and isolation. You just don't have it. I have one story that I thought of that illustrates that. It was like six months ago, and some friends of mine and I had started um, picking up trash on a regular basis in a neighborhood where there's never a shortage of trash and always a shortage of people who want to pick it up. And we were there every month, and we just, you know, grab her some trash bags. We're just picking up trash, right? Because we're going to believe that we can make an impact on our city, right? And I found out, this is a free one, a side note, that a life of impact um, almost always step, starts with steps so small they seem ridiculous. Almost always. 
It's hard for me to overcome the momentum of my life to get up and pick out trash on a Saturday morning. It seems so insignificant and small. But you know that as I did that for a month, for over a year, an amazing thing started happening. Same thing that happened on the side of a mountain in Guatemala. I liked who I was becoming. So my friends and I were out picking up trash, right? Grabbers, trash bags. And for some reason, the normal route that we walked, we finished quicker this month. I don't know why. And so we were going to go into another kind of abandoned lot or empty field. And the people who were with me, one guy was walking with me this week specifically. He's a young guy. And, and we walked up to this field, and we stood there, and we looked at it together. He looks at me, he's like, dude, why are we even going to go in here? He's like, you know, it was in the morning, by this evening, this place is going to be a mess again. It's just the neighborhood it's in. You know it's going to be a mess again. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, yeah, I mean, but listen, I'm not claiming to have solutions here. I'm not walking in here because I know how the whole thing is going to resolve. I'm not walking in here focused on what we're going to accomplish. I'm paying attention to who we're becoming. And so I'm not really interested if there will be trash here later. I'm interested in, am I the person who's going to pick it up while it is here? And so that was enough for him, right? We walk into the field together. And we're kind of walking through the field. Everybody's picking up trash. We're like setting trash bags by the side and picking up more trash, right? And we get to the far corner of the field. And I notice something out of the corner of my eye. Like in this field, guys have worked on cars and they've like um, changed oil and stuff for a long time. And so there's like oil filters and boxes and bags from auto parts stores all kind of neatly piled in this pile. And they've been there for a while, so the weeds are kind of growing up over them. I mean, it's gross. And I just kind of notice it out of the side of my eye, right? And I'm like, I just hope the dude next to me doesn't notice it and we can all just walk by it and not have to deal with it. Right? Because I did not want to pick that up. So I walk by, and I'm like hoping, and I'm not that lucky, right? <laughs> the high schooler that I gave the talk to right before we walked in the field, he like looks, he walks right up to it, and he stands over that pie, and he looks down at it. He just stands there. He looks at it. It's gross. And then he looks over at me. He's like, Ben, he's like, I think we just got to let the city pick up this. I was like, in that moment, I knew. I'm not going to like myself if I'm that person. I said, no, we don't. Man, we're here, and we're the people who do these things. That's who we are. That's who we're becoming. So together, right, we're picking up the trash, and we do it. We get through it. Put it in, we had room in the trash bag. It was gross, but then it was done. I love that story because, see, we needed each other. We needed each other. If it weren't for him standing next to me, I would have walked by and pretended that I never saw it. I needed him standing next to me to call me out and question, hey, who are you really becoming? And he needed me to remind him of the reason to start it to begin with. See, if you're going to like who you're becoming, if you're going to f step into a life of me, impact, and community, you're never going to get there by yourself. And it was in that moment and in that experience that I said, you know what? This is what I'm going to spend myself doing. I'm going to cultivate a network of people in my city who will have the courage to take up a life of meaning, impact, and community. I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to start in my city, and we're going to build a network, and we're going to dream together about how we can become those people and what potential it might have for where we're living, for who we are, and for the world around us. I know it's going to make my life better. I think it will theirs, too.